What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Unplayable, the Conversation Lab. We're here, all four of us together. We're here for another podcast. Mike, J. Jim, how are you guys feeling today? Amazing. So the best. The best. Jim, why are you the best? Uh, uh, gosh, you weren't supposed to ask me a follow-up question. <laughs> yeah, you just done like, goofed, son. It's you like, done like, goofed. Like, oh, I'm living the dream. Not just a throwaway comment. Nobody actually knows what it means. You just say it. I'm the best right now. Okay. All right. Sweet. <laughs> well, what, t- tell me about your Star Wars Unlimited experiences and your local scene. How are your local scenes developing? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Before we get too far, I keep forgetting mm. to mention this. If anybody out there is a good graphic designer, I would like to hire you to make us a the conversation lab like you know logo thing. I think that'd be pretty fun. So hit me up. Yeah. Wow. There you go. <laughs> Nailed it. We we make so much money on Unplayable <laughs> that we are now contracting <laughs> our own graphic designer going forward. I, I was just talking to Jack about this the other day that we haven't turned on ads yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't need them. He was like, why not? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> because we love our viewers who hate ads. So. That's just, exactly. That's yeah, just that, that more money <laughs> that w- we have to claim on taxis. And I don't want to do that. Jay, Jay knows. <laughs> this is my first year having to pay pay when tax season comes. And I oh, got a man. kid. And I'm married. <laughs> I still got to pay money. Trash. <laughs> Absolute trash. All right. So how's your uh, local scene? <laughs> It's fantastic. Right. <laughs> Tell us no, about it, Jay. No, no, seriously though. Like I'm incredibly pleasant. I, I said this to you guys the other day, pleasantly surprised by the amount of people that are joining this game right now. I like I like the game and when they announced it and all that stuff, I was like, cool, another Star Wars game for us to get into. I did not expect the amount of people getting into the game that's getting into the game right now it's mm-hmm. honestly it's unprecedented and yeah, that's based based on what they said they printed a ton of this stuff and they had sold more faster than they expected which mm-hmm. supposedly you know they printed they they did an estimate and they were like all right that let's double that and then let's be generous and add a little bit more and it's like they went through all that so the tons of people are playing it's crazy um especially in south florida south florida is not big for ffg card games at all like none of their card games have survived here keyforge any of their lcgs destiny no one played them down here down here it's all like anime card games and magic and i guess some people play flesh and blood but it's really not even that big down here our star wars pullings have been way more than the flesh and bloods which is kind of crazy to me nice so yeah i'm very surprised by the amount of people playing which is cool yeah Are we worried about the product shortage? Is this something where we're saying, you know, obviously FFG has been the source of a lot of criticism over the years about destiny shortages. Are we concerned about this? How are we feeling? Well, number one, you cannot compare (laughs) the start of Star Wars Unlimited with X-Wing, with Destiny, with Netrunner, because you people that wanted to buy it were able to go get a case. You know what I mean? Like Destiny days. Those are the dark ages. You'd be lucky <laughs> if you got a box. Yeah. Or a Lorcana, for example. Like, you literally couldn't get that stuff. People were selling this below MSRP. Yeah, for a long out. time. For, like, two weeks. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, product dried up and people are starting to charge more, which, like, I, obviously, we should talk about, like, the official communication that FFG put out and the fact that they did that. And mm-hmm. that's not a thing that they ever really did in the Destiny days. It was just kind no. of like... Oh, we'll have more stuff when we have more stuff. Uh, we don't really have anything to say right now. Like that was garbage. And now having that level of communication now that we never had before from FFG is like night and day from what it was before. E- even yep. if they had no product remaining and they like literally sold through everything because it was so much more successful than they thought it would. Like I, I think the fact that they are are willing to communicate like that mm-hmm. is just like speaks a ton to like uh, Mm -hmm. my confidence in them as a company not only that but how the fact that they saved product because in case it does sell out we want you guys to be able to do draft and sealed at your local game store so we're holding on to a certain amount of product that we will release gradually until we get another print run so that you guys can still do draft and sealed that's like a ton of confidence on their side too because they could just put it all out there in the wild and just be like, okay, it's selling like hotcakes. Like, let's just 
put it all yeah. out there and sell it out like so that we sell it out but they are obviously playing at the the long the, the long game yeah. which is awesome yeah and you know trying to not burn their fans you know yeah. like yeah. Yeah. this game is meant to be drafted it was designed mm-hmm. from the floor up with the idea of having draft in mind so it's like if we can't draft because there's no product that's bad so at least they're doing something to let us still do that yeah yeah and yeah i went to i went to a local store here yesterday to see if i could grab a few packs and he was sold out and he was sad about the retailer the owner because there's they're supposed to be a draft this tuesday and now it's got to be premier constructed but he said but my distributor said two weeks like you'll have product mm-hmm. in two weeks which is cool that's not bad. At least reasonable. And I, I was also talking to another guy that uh, Jim and I both know, and he was talking about going out and buying a box. And I said, hey, y- you may or may not be able to. I don't know. But I'll, I pulled up TCG Player to look at the singles of the type of deck he wanted to build. And I'm like, you got commons and uncommons at pennies. There yeah. are only a few rares that are like crazy right now. And cr- even crazy isn't right because it's like red three is $9 or K2 SO is eight bucks or something. And so I was looking, I was like, you can actually build a good deck. Like you could actually have a good constructed deck right now while you're waiting for product if you wanted to. So yeah, mm-hmm. so I, I don't think that if anything, the shortage just means, okay, maybe we don't get to draft and do sealed as much as we wanted to at this moment, but but it's coming too. So I feel good about it. Jim, yeah. any thoughts? It does suck. <laughs> uh, it does suck. Wait, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I want to hear what sucks. <laughs> like... I, I understand why people would be upset about it because over the next two weeks, like this is the perfect time to be able to draft. Like I don't want to wait. Oh, sure. Like if I'm going to three locals a week and these are all supposed to be drafts so that I can build my collection or people that didn't buy a ton of boxes because they figured I'll draft my way into my collection over the next, the first month of the game. It sucks for those people that didn't buy any and can't get any now. So like, I understand why they, they would be upset about it, but I don't know. It's not. I don't think it's as big of a deal as people are making it. I think. I think if if you're a store and you're trying to host drafts over the course of the month, like you should be holding boxes back for for yeah. local drafts. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I sure. think part of that is probably also on the retailer and not on FFG. Yeah, I I think my only thoughts on it right now is just this game has so much hype and buzz around it. Like guys that like I never would have thought would have been into card games. I just briefly showed them the game. They're like. I need that in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a it's yeah. a bit of a bummer that it's harder for them to get into the game when the excitement is like currently at its peak. Maybe it'll keep rising, but you are kind of playing this weird game of like, you don't want to ruin that momentum by any means. And so it's something that could ruin momentum, but it sounds like FFG is doing the best they can to like help with that. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it very well could have just been all bought up by like the mega stores that buy like tons and tons of cases and then flip them but they were smart to think like, let's not let that happen, which I really appreciate. Mm-hmm. There sure. is zero allocation. If that says yeah. anything to you <laughs> about how much they printed and what FFG has done, it's like there was no allocation. All mm-hmm. the people that yeah. were scared about getting allocated that didn't buy into it as a retailer because they were scared of being allocated. None of that happened. So that, mm-hmm. I mean, that's a huge step above what's ever happened before. Yep. Yeah. Just crazy. Yeah. The only thing allocated was the game genic, stuff yeah the like, a, stuff, like i think you need a dealer to find the game genic tokens right now um, <laughs> so true which is crazy again it's like who knew tokens of all things i'll, I'll trade be? my extra token set for a box <laughs> yeah <laughs> but to your point jay I, it does feel like in this like second wave of excitement that's coming through now that the game's released like my twitter feed is all these like flesh and blood players keyforge players old destiny players like lorcana players all kind of like saying, "Hey, I opened some product." Um, it's it's yeah. uh, it's like the TCG players are like smelling like blood in the water. <laughs> Almost, it's like, oh, a new game, and it's like actually successful and good, and <laughs> everybody's all of a sudden just like swarming to it because because of all those factors. And I, I'm not surprised that they're running low on stock because it feels like it is catching on with the broader like TCG community, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I would point out that in early, one of our very early unplayable podcasts, I talked about if they hired me as a consultant for <laughs> their projections, I would say, give me whatever your highest number is and then triple that. Yeah. And they should have done it. <laughs> they should have hired me on, coach. <laughs> uh, also, hang on. You, you just reminded me that I think literally tomorrow is one year from Let's the go. first episode of 
unplayable that we posted to YouTube. Wow, that's oh my awesome. gosh. Which is nuts. Happy <laughs> birthday, awesome. you guys. We did it. So th- this yeah. episode will probably come out tomorrow, our, which will be the 26th, which is one year. I'm pretty sure. Let's after, go. Which is wild. And we hit 6,000 <laughs> subs yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Huge for the program. Insane. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right. So um, how I, I really did mean the question, how are your local scenes developing? <laughs> <laughs> mine is, um, mine is slow. My, mine is okay. slow. We, I, well, OK, so the the bigger area in Sacramento is growing super well. There's like four or five stores that are hosting weekly events and a couple of stores are hosting multiple weekly events, which is really sweet. But that's like an hour north of me. And the town that I live in is much, much smaller. We have two stores. One of them is only hosting one event per month, which is a little rough for me, but they're pretty small shop and they basically like are they're basically ro- like rotating games every like week so it's you know every game is once a month basically so i'm trying to set this new store up that just opened earlier in the year with organized play and we played there last friday i was gone this past weekend but we played there we had four people this coming week i think we're gonna have more and just you know hopefully gonna grow that store over time they haven't been able to get in touch with asthma day to get set up with official organized play so i'm trying to figure out how to push that through because i can't be caught with uh, a once per month local store that would <laughs> I, suck. I, got, I gotta get my fix in so uh. especially like you want to <laughs> open those op packs which i finally i, opened I haven't my first opened, one. i haven't been able to open a single one yeah actually oh, no. this saturday this saturday is the very first event at the the first store that i mentioned that is once a month so i'll get one at the very least this saturday let's go looking forward to i'm that. going tonight and i'll get my second nice. op pack i'm like give me something good yeah <laughs> yep. i've opened two what's the what, what's like the cool card that you get from that like what what, what does everybody like think is the best foil one foil sabine it's sabine. probably pretty cool i haven't uh, followed that like, like- at all the foil bosk looks pretty sweet. The yeah. foil bosk, yeah, that one's really expensive. Everybody wants that for the boba deck. So yep. like sense. obviously that's that's a good one. The Death Trooper is pretty cool. Personally, I like the hyperspace yeah. version of the original. Yeah, the original Death Trooper, Trooper the art, art is so, so sick. It's so good that like the new one <laughs> like can't live yeah. up to it. It feels it's like still it's really good. Out, like, California to me. Yeah. I <laughs> I I, uh, I think I think I tweeted this, but I I've never bought like special Boy. variants of any card in any game yeah. and i bought three <laughs> hyperspace death troopers at like a dollar a piece or something so i was like i just have so to sick. have the hyperspace version <laughs> of this like i just yeah. i want it yeah and the fact they're not like super expensive is cool oh yeah 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 i've been trying to trying to like buy up as many cheap hyperspace and hyperspace foil like commons mm-hmm. and uncommons as i can find the foil stormtrooper death star stormtrooper oh looks that one's cool. sick too um you got the that foil one, right? you, yeah i got that one i got one of those i was pretty stoked about that to throw in my tarkin deck mm-hmm. um the yoda i don't know how i feel about the way yoda oh, looks. I, I, I do like the yoda <laughs> it looks pretty good the dodano one looks really cool mm-hmm. yeah he's and just I not played that's that like much yeah. isn't Resu- is resupply a, a foil i don't remember i remember oh, i think so, it comes right? as a foil oh it doesn't oh, come okay. as a foil it is a, a weird... it is a different art though. oh it is it yeah. is a different art, and it's got the green border, but I don't... It's a yeah. rare, so I think it would come as a foil, potentially. Oh, okay. That's cool, then. Hmm. Well, we I got that as just a normal one. Yeah, we, we kicked off a locally a sealed Escalation League, so you start with six that packs on fun. week one, and then every week you come, you can buy one more pack, and you can add to it, and then there's different achievements that the store created Ooh. that you get extra... So you get points just not for winning. You get points for playing an, a person you haven't played yet in the league. So that's cool. Like bring in new players or whatever. And then other random things uh, like use a force user to kill another force user. You get a, a league point. Use <laughs> nice. a, use yeah. a, uh, if you like use that's a vehicle awesome. to do five damage to kill someone's base or destroy someone's base, just random, random achievements like that, that you can. So it's led to some fun times. Cause obviously it doesn't really matter who wins, but playing with a local Kevin and I, I, it, I was winning like, I don't know, 27 to five. Like I was very close to killing his base, but I, I wanted to get the, the vehicle achievement. No, no, it was, you had to have five <laughs> units out at the same time. 
and it have to be three cost or less and so i was trying to stall the game and i was just not attacking to try to That's get that so fifth <laughs> unit out of like three cost or less um but there was like no way to do it and then he was like and he was like trying to help me but also not like punt it at the same time too <laughs> oh so it gosh. just led to some really funny moments that felt like okay this is good local league play where it's just nonsense but we're making good memories so it's been great i mean even just the chicago area in general there are more stores and more nights of the week and more events than I can keep track of. Like if you there's there's I don't know three stores every night of the week that you could probably drive to and play in. That's cool. Uh, within a reasonable amount of time. Um, That's awesome. So it it has exploded here for sure. Well, good. Want, definitely want to touch on the local piece. I think a lot of people are asking that question about how to build their local scene and just doubling just, down on the talk to your store owners. Like talk to them. Don't just wait uh i think a lot of times people are like waiting for the stores to do it so i'm just saying it again talk to your store owners get to know them they're real people i promise just uh dmd house with all of your questions and he'll give you sage advice That's right. the entire playbook on how to get a local community started <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like i feel like we each have our role on this podcast like i'm the community guy mike's the binder guy uh how many questions <laughs> do we get about mike's binder in discord <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't know what Jay's a, role is yet. What's your role? Jay? I have a local that bought that binder. Yeah, that's and he's awesome. doing yeah, yeah, yeah. the exact same thing. Hell yeah, that's awesome. I want to be like Mike one day. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I, I I had to had to buy a second one so that it'd be set up for set two already. And they yeah. they sold out of the black version of the binder. They only have the white now. So uh, I don't I don't like the way the white one looks at all. <laughs> so oh, I, no. I, they 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 got to restock it before set three comes out. <laughs> oh. That's uh, funny. My maybe, role is just like looking good. I yeah, just, I, bring the, uh, you're the face. I bring the good looks. <laughs> the face. The, yeah. Jay's, Jay, Someone's got to hold it. Jay's down. the muscle. <laughs> yeah. In our crew. The muscle. There you go. <laughs> maybe Jim. Jim's the viral deck builder, right? Your Grand Inquisitor yeah. deck just going viral on the uh, on Swoody B. Yeah. Who knew that fun little uh, hey scout bike pursuer looks pretty cool? Let's toss in a Grand Inquisitor deck and see what happens. Yeah, take off but here we are <laughs> that's that's so wild what uh do you guys have any early speaking of decks like any decks that you're working on or you're tinkering with right now jay's got I lots do, <laughs> do you want to talk about messing, it I'm always is it, is it with secret sauce decks. or is it public uh public knowledge no 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 i can i can uh i can fill the beans i'm going to a local tonight and i'm bringing my uh thrawn deck i've been messing yeah. with that's nice. uh it's got like zero ground units except for the dude that exhausts all the ground units and then it runs a bunch of like stall until you get to uh turn eight so you can super laser blast everything and then you just start dropping giant ships like the avenger <laughs> and uh you win like that it's easy can you win a best of three in 55 minutes <laughs> easy <laughs> okay what what's the play here well it's, it's easy because he only plays one card a turn yep i just <laughs> all i have to do is win one the first game anyway and then yeah. i just stall the second game <laughs> You make plays so you're not slow playing, but you you know what you're doing. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, going for objective mode over here to get all of my three costs out. I love that. <laughs> I, Jay, I thought I thought you were going to talk about your uh, your spicy oh, yeah. aspect. Uh, oh, stuff we can talk about that too. All right, go for I'm it. I'm always playing out of aspect cards yeah. just to see hey, if I can make them you, break. You got to surprise people. Exactly, and this one's a huge surprise. So I had this idea where I was going to build Grand Inquisitor and I was going to throw in the, I was going to throw in super laser text. And I was going to throw in uh, ruthless Raiders and hopefully in the future, I get more when defeated abilities to make this even more sick. But uh, yeah, heroic sacrifice is a one cost. That's only heroic, but let's put it in a villain deck and see what happens. I mean, you play ruthless Raider deal two damage to their base. Next turn, you follow it up with a heroic sacrifice swing for eight at their base. And then you deal two more when he dies. So that's a total of 10 damage right there, which is more than what K2SO gives you when you heroic sacrifice him for nine. And uh, I won a game like that the other day. So why not do it for 10? <laughs> that's Sounds spicy. Then, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> the other spice you play is turn three, you play super laser tech. And then turn four, you play. Well, I, I say turn three and turn four. When I say that, I mean resource turns, not the actual turn of the game. Then you play Heroic Sacrifice and either trade up into like a fifth brother or something with four health or just hit their base for four and then let your dude die, draw a card and then put them in your resources. You get a card back 
you wanted your super laser tech to die. He wasn't going to probably kill anything swinging for two. Usually when you use super laser tech, it's just to get the resource back. It's like he mm -hmm. doesn't actually do anything for you. So being able to swing for four in the base and get some aggro damage and draw a card and get that resource is kind of spicy. You I end up like with it. two ready resources, play two costs, two <laughs> stormtroopers in hand, play those out. I'd say, I, 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 I do it. like the command yeah. appeal there because Grand Inquisitor can do that for free. Like Vader to do the ping costs a resource, so you can't do that on turn two, three resource mm -hmm. turn. But Grand Inquisitor, you totally can yep. uh, and get away with it. So it doesn't ready it, yeah. but it just does kill it and hmm. goes to your resource pool. So. I would love to see more spicy out of aspect additions to decks. I think that's one of the unique things about this game that yeah. feels different than other games mm -hmm. uh, that I can't wait to see especially like i'm even thinking surprise strike is one of those where i'm like a t sometimes playing paying four to get an extra three to just finish it out that your opponent's not expecting uh yeah, this is, the surprise factor crazy. is huge i think in an open de deck list format all that stuff gets way worse but yeah when your opponent's not playing around something if they're the type of person that plays around things then it can be very 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 good surprising like yeah. what if you put it <laughs> what if you just say. put surprise strike in your sideboard if it is that open would be deck a huge list. surprise just, just to just to see if like if they think it's in your side like, is he is he putting it in is he is he slotting it in or not and then the whole time they're playing around this card that isn't in there that's a that's another angle like yeah. uh yeah. that's that's something else that, that you can do that's kind of kind of crazy <sighs> it's been a lot of the game. like mind games with traders especially yeah like yeah. do oh, they yeah. have traders or not mm -hmm. so yeah. i've uh I've been messing with out of aspect vigilance because yep. I love mill so much, but the reality <laughs> is I think it's only good against other control decks. Yeah, of course. So the only fine. time I'm trying to mill somebody is a control mirror match, but yeah, I've been messing with blue, red Iden with that in there and it's been really good. Definitely I spicy. Think it's a solid deck list and playing 50 cards to 32 cards is quite the uh, uphill climb <laughs> for your opponent. I, um, I play vigilance in the sideboard for Thrawn because he has the same game plan. If I'm playing against control and it's not looking good, just I just keep stalling with all my exhausting shenanigans and then just discard for six and heal five, discard for six, heal five. And then in the main deck, it has cunning out of aspect so that you can deal with three units at one time yep. against aggro. I can't wait to hear how this actually goes tonight. <laughs> yeah, <same. laughs> We'll see. O2 drop. <laughs> so the, the deck I've been uh, toying with is, well, when I made the deck, the, the deck naming algorithm on Sweetie B named it Brown Batman, and I never changed it. So it's it's just it's forever called Brown just Batman. Is what it is. The best part is because it's a Chewbacca deck. And so I don't know if it's tied to Chewbacca or what, but the Brown Batman, I was like, that's amazing. Probably um, just random. But you can tell David uh, loved Keyforge by the random names. That I, gets oh about. my gosh, I 100%. But anyways, so it's a bombing run Chewbacca deck. So the nice. idea is run a bunch of guys that either get good effects on when defeated, like K2SO, or have crazy grit so that you can play the bombing run, maybe clear some of their units, and create these kind of endgame scenarios where you are yeah, uh, you can swing with two units for, for lethal. So it's got like K2SO, it's got the Rugged Survivors, the Gorilla Attack Pod, Mm -hmm. So you can kind of ramp into the Chewbacca, drop the bombing run. I even I even met, toyed with putting the uh, the Occupier Siege tank. It's that red uh, five four with grit, but I'm like this thing would probably That's die so bad. easily. That's it's <laughs> at least the rugged survivors have more health, so they can uh, maybe stick around longer. But but it it's been fun. It's not good, but it's fun. <laughs> and, Sometimes you uh, need a deck like that. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need this like pet side deck to just be like, oh, here's this thing that I'll play at a locals and oh you want to play a good premiere game like okay let's try let's try some brown batman yep that 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 <laughs> is still blue leia for me is the the deck that we sort of discovered you that you you built for the uh the star wars christmas thing the swoop christmas yep. thing that we did and i kind of was like oh this this is a cool idea uh it is not a very good deck but it is a lot of fun and you can do some cool things like you know attack with luke and a redemption for like 13 at the end of a game so it just like fun, more casual, more just like, I don't know, maybe they are underpowered, but like deck, decks that are fun for you to play against people that don't have maybe as much experience as you, I think are, are really good because mm -hmm. I think that this more than most other games that I've played, like really, really rewards experience and like being, being a good player. And I think that, yeah, like, I don't know, I feel like. I I get more out of playing those kinds of decks against newer players than playing like, you know, 
top tier meta stuff like that's not fun for either player yeah i i I would double down i would say you should bring a weird non-typical deck to your locals right now because you got so many new players coming in Mm -hmm. the last thing they need is to be you know don't stomp them with like boba green or or sabine green Green or or, yeah or you know what, what, whatever don't your, green. your try hard deck is <laughs> <laughs> just don't play green and no, you, you can play gin green uh, you can play uh, yeah, okay yeah 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 you can play gin yeah oh did oh we're <laughs> gonna get into that yeah or any monocolor decks i feel like my uh, there's no like big like oh this double blue double green double yellow double red thing double i guess boba, boba, boba pretty, is yeah boba's good. Good. <laughs> so gin yellow you can play gin yellow <laughs> But all right, so any anything else on the decks? Or I want to move into like some some tournament results. Let's do it. Yeah, let's all do right. it. All right. So over the weekend, there was uh, on Saturday a 222 person tournament in England. I believe it was in London. There's at uh, this famous stadium, which sounded really really cool. But 222 players for this kind of inaugural big event run by Organized Play Events out in the UK, and they had a live stream for this event on Twitch that they had commentary over. I kind of stumbled into it. I knew it was happening, and then I forgot, and then I was sitting there. I was like, oh, my gosh. So I tuned in around round four or five and watched the whole thing. And nice. just just that alone made me so happy because I've been looking forward to those days since this game was announced where you could have a lazy Saturday or something with your coffee and just sit there and, and enjoy the game when you can't play the game. It was super sweet. So I want to shout them out because it was a great, great stream. I've heard it's going to be made available this week sometimes so people can go back and watch it. But lots of great players, good commentary. And there was a good 350 people watching the live stream at any any given moment. Nice. So it's probably the average I saw on there, which was really, really cool. But were any of you guys able to follow the results or watch any of the stream? I did not watch the stream, but I've looked at all the data from the results. Same. Yeah, I was... Okay. At a wedding, so I, I was not paying very much attention. <laughs> you, you didn't have the phone on, in your lap? Uh, <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, Palp got another win. <laughs> what was I doing Saturday? I would have been excited about that. <laughs> oh, I was at a Locals on Saturday when it was nice. happening, so I couldn't be playing against my opponent watching. <laughs> that, that would have been an nice. experience for them. Uh, so there was no top cut to this event. It was just a play eight rounds, and then they gave a ton of boxes away for the uh, the top finishers. So shout out to Mr. Cool is the name on uh, limit, name. LimitlessTCG.com. Went 8-0, run in good old Boba Green. So yeah. um, good deck. What was second? S- seems okay. Second place. <laughs> oh, it's Very little with Boba oh, Green. Oh, it's fourth. <laughs> so it's Boba. What was ninth? <laughs> That's it. There it is. In ninth place, we had Grand Inquisitor Blue. Everybody, let's go. You're so. welcome. Well, they, they they were they were all boba, but they weren't all green. There were a couple of yellows, right? Yeah, I think it was two, just two yellows. Two, yeah, yeah, two yellows. So th- that's what I want to talk about. There was a bunch of data. Th- again, thanks to Limitless TCG, you could follow it all the whole time, and I I. Uh, love when we can follow live and get this kind of data, even though Jay's going to fall asleep. So there were, <laughs> there were 43 Boba Fett's in this 222 person tournament. There were 32 Sabines, 26 Vader's 25 Iden's kind of round out the top four. Any of that surprise you guys? I was surprised that there was more Vader's than Iden and almost as much as Sabine. Yeah, that, that is interesting. I, yeah. I don't I'm hit or miss on it. I, I really am curious like what percentage of the decks would be like totally built out and didn't just have like a bunch of the starter cards in them. That's where I don't have that information. I don't know like what they all look like, but you can you, see you can look at all their decks. person's deck list. I would not I did not click through all two hundred twenty two. <laughs> well that's on you, Jim. To look through this that. is a professional I, I podcast. <laughs> right. Right. And I professionally looked at the Grand Inquisitor deck and got excited about it. <laughs> but I, I am curious if like a lot of the attachment to Vader was because they really liked the way Vader played in the initial sealed events or their starter decks. Fair. Uh, and so it's just an easy thing to kind of transition into. More well, so how many than, Lukes are there? I've played a lot of Vader now. And I, I think he's very strong and very fun and very good. So I'm not, I'm not surprised that like a lot of people also like Vader. But... Mm-hmm. I think like I, th- it seems like the community thinks that the top three decks are basically Boba, Aiden, or Sabine, or like Aiden or Krennic mm-hmm. or whatever. So Vader felt a little bit more under the radar than those other two. So that that might be I don't know why why it, why it feels a little bit weird, but yeah, I, I think like logically it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, and especially. 
people consider Vader to have a good matchup in the Boba. So if mm-hmm. Boba, you expect Boba to be half the field, then maybe Vader's was a good meta pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd I would say the people it. who are on Boba this early are probably thinking through like, what is a meta going to look like? Like even with their showcase series, it was all Green Sabine in the top. I mean, Sabine was just getting so much hype that they were like, I bet there's going to be a lot of Sabine here. And Boba does favor really well into Sabine yeah. and into Leia. So I'm not surprised that the folks who are kind of thinking that kind of like at that step of thinking through metas are on Boba are also the ones doing well. And I would be willing to bet the next bigger tournament kind of responds in the same way of like, okay, well, if we think people are going to be on Boba, have a hunch that Krennic and Aiden are going to be much more popular. So we'll see. Mm. Yeah. And then, then Sabine gets better because she's better against those stats. Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. It, I mean, that, that's the fun part about following all this. And I, David, you probably are about to mention this, but there's, you know, been some chatter on the internet of like, oh, the whole top eight was all Bobas and the game is unbalanced and everything is, you know, upside down, blah, blah, blah. But like, this is just one event. 222 people is a lot, but it's not like, it's not, it's not like the biggest event in the world. And then like, I, I don't know. It's, it's just one data point. So I think like if, if over the course of the next month, every big event is just, you know, top eights of va- of Boba the entire way through, then that could, you know, like that, that's probably a problem, but like give, yep. pe- give people a chance to react to, to that result and then see what happens. Yeah. I was mentioning this before we hit record, but for, for those who are new to the TCG space, every weekend there's a new story and then there's yeah. a week of reaction to it. There's a new cycle that happens to this. And all the other podcasts are probably going to be hitting the same exact thing. But two weeks ago, it was a Chewbacca deck that made top eight in Poland in a 90-person tournament. And everyone went, oh, my gosh, Chewbacca. Like, we should all run Chewbacca. And then it was this event. And it's Boba. It's like, this is yeah. just this is how these communities work. And don't be afraid of the discourse that comes from it, too. TCG communities are, like, notorious hive minds where like everybody just thinks the same thing like like that that's why like flavor of the week decks like are such a thing and if if you've been tr- tracking this game at all it's like at first it was i don't know sabine yellow and then it's like boba green and then it's sabine green and then it's Aiden green and then like every like it feels like everybody's sort of on the same deck from week to week and the same thing is popping up and you see multiple content creators make content about the same deck it's just that it's just the way it is for some reason with, with TCGs. And it's hard to hard to break out of that because it is such like an echo chamber. But I think, I don't know, like if you take a step experiment. back and yeah, experiment, try new things. And I don't know, attack, attack the game from a different angle. Don't just believe what everybody else says and everybody else, you know, thinks is the best. Yeah. Like try it all for yourself. And I, I don't know. I, I think that that's when you get the really interesting decks that pop up and surprise people. Yep. Yep. I, I feel like every game I've played, there's been like the doom and gloom. This deck is absolutely tier zero nonsense. And I've only ever seen it play out like in a real way once. And that was probably like Bravo star of the show with flesh and blood that just dominated in a real way. But it, it just, it's going to happen every single tournament. Oh my gosh. It's Ruby Amethyst all over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, like it like, is a theater. fact that like something will rise to the top. That That is just like how, how, life works right like one thing will ultimately be the best or will have the best shot at winning but i i think that like the problem happens when the differential between that thing that is at the top is like way above the other decks that are like fighting for that position and i don't think there were anywhere close to like being able to call boba green like that deck in this game yeah so here here's the data point that i love to tell people in in response in the top 31, this is six and two or better in this in this event. There were 12 different leaders represented of the 18 possible. That's awesome. Six and two. So if they had cut to a top 32 or even a top 16, like who knows how that could have ended. I think the difference yeah. between seven and one, which is second through eighth place, and a six and two is, I mean, one or two decisions, one or two mistakes yeah. in a game or sequencing errors. And so, so the fact that 12 leaders were represented, that, that t- to me told me, okay, there is opportunity here. And I like what you said, like, don't just go with the hive mind and don't just believe what we say as content creators, like go play your gin blue deck and, you know, yeah, and, and dominate some, <laughs> go dominate. Yeah. Go dominate some tournament and then we'll all freak out about it and we'll celebrate it and, and just, yeah, enjoy this time because I think there is so much room for creativity. So uh, I, I love that. Do you know who some did people make- think? 
You, some people think Boba Fett is trash and overrated. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine. So the ones that didn't make it to six and two, Jay Tarkin. <laughs> Tarkin, uh, Jim, Hera, uh, IG88, Cassian, and Chewbacca, and then nobody, nobody played a Jin deck in 222 players. Nobody <laughs> registered. That's at rough. All. That that is David rough. is immediately is like taking on Jin. <laughs> yeah. His project well, the problem, the I think the biggest <laughs> issue with Jin is like Han is just so much more interesting. So if he you're is, playing yeah, Yellow you're Hero, playing like Yellow. just play Han. Yeah, Yellow has nothing to do with rough how good Jin is. I think Falcon yeah. and Ezra are like the reasons why you would play yellow hero. And those are both like way better in Han yeah, than any other exactly. deck, I think. I did get a lot of responses, ironically, when I posted that of a bunch of people saying, I just sleeved up a gin deck for locals this week because <laughs> of this awesome. tweet. Like, <laughs> I was like, wow. Like, that, that's are... the right energy, though. Like, prove, yeah. prove people wrong. That, that's what's fun. Yeah. yeah. There was barely any Tarkins that played. And the Tarkins that did play were trash decks. Sorry. <laughs> if you're listening to this, you should have went on Slew DV, looked <laughs> no, at the gosh. top, the hot list, the hot Give decks, the list. <laughs> and just, just said, oh, Jay Unplayable. This is going to be a perfect <laughs> list. And just ran that. You would have been doing so much this better. This is a perfect list. <laughs> uh, that's good. I mean, it is cool, though, because like there is no such thing as like a perfect list. Like I guarantee like if Bubba Green does win the next bigger tournament, it's because they look to see like everyone's probably going to bring the Mr. Cool list because, again, hive mind. You look to see what won, you sleeve it up, but the person's going to win it like will tech their deck against Bubba Green. And so they have intentionally built their deck to still have most of the same matchup but also be favored into Boba because that's going to be the spice. And so it's like if Boba does win again, pretty much guarantee their list is going to be tacked very well against other Bobos. So let me let me be our audience for a second, Jim, because there's probably someone who's new to the game who's saying, what do you mean tech against Boba? How would you respond to someone like that? If they were worried that they're going to go to their local tournament this Saturday and face a bunch of Bobas, what yeah. would you say to that new player? Oh, I mean... Is it like how to tech into them or yeah, like, well, what does find, that mean? Find a new local scene to go to. <laughs> <laughs> Move to South Florida. Play Jim's I mean, Thrawn or Jay's Thrawn. I mean, That's probably the, worse. the genuine advice would be like in the locals, just bring what makes is fun for you. Like it's not that big of a deal. Like if you're not playing tier zero meta stuff. So I, I guess I'm a little confused by your question. If you're asking I'm, about no, how, like a new of, TCG it, player that yeah. doesn't know what it means to when you say... These okay. people are, we're going to tech against Boba Fett. Sure. What, uh, what does that mean? And give so me some examples of cards you would yeah. play in a deck. If you against are Boba. a style that you'd want to play to play sure. against all the tryhards at their locals this Saturday. Yeah. Something. And then tell so, us what your greatest strengths and weaknesses are. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, <laughs> my weakness is that I care too much yeah. and I try too hard. Uh, I would say if you're teching against a unit or a deck, it's, Tip, this game has what's called a sideboard. So you have 10 cards that you can add to your deck. So it's like you're adding cards to that list that specifically go against what you think is going to show up. So not necessarily for Boba Fett, but one example that like we've even talked about is like take down the card. So if you're expecting a lot of items, item comes down, it's four health unit, take down can just kill item, the turn it comes out, cheer it, very similar idea of cheer it's really hard to clear. But if you play takedown, it immediately dies. It doesn't wait till the end of the turn. Boom. And so you're adding some things that go against like what that deck's trying to do. For Boba Fett, if you're playing any sort of red villain, I think Force Choke is a brilliant option. You're looking at like Boba Fett, the three cost unit is five health. If you are worried about that in any capacity, you just clear it off the board right away. Specifically with that deck though, Boba Fett's really good on the turn that you have five resources because you can essentially play with eight resources of things. So not playing into that as best as possible is actually a great option. If you're going to play just like some cheap unit that's going to immediately get obliterated by what they have on board, don't do that. So that one's more of like play style than it is like what cards you're putting in there. But that's the reason Boba Fett's so good is because the turn Boba Fett comes out, it's getting an additional three resources of cards that you're able to play. And it just gets so far ahead that from there, they play all of their cunnings and their waylays so that you never get a board back and they just wipe you off the board from there. So saving removal for that turn is my recommendation or if you're going to tech against it, that's what I would be doing. 
it's super good against aggro pieces because aggro right now is you go wide on board, you're attacking for three with everything you have, and while they're wasting their time killing your units, you're swinging at their face. Boba Fett lets you exhaust a lot of those units, so they're basically null and void on that turn while also playing units that can swing at your face. So they're almost playing aggressively against aggressive decks, which doesn't really make a total lot of sense. Mm-hmm except for the fact that it's they're clearing your board, getting units on board, and that's what they're swinging in with. That's good, Jim. Yeah. You don't have to keep going. <laughs> Thank that was, you. That was satisfactory. <laughs> it, this is a pass-fail, and you, and you, you get passed, a raise. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you got, you got that's all my thought. We're going to have to work on the strength and weaknesses portion, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need a coach, coach. <laughs> How I sell shoe. <laughs> hey, any, any other reactions to the tournament results or just in general? From from the weekend. Shout out to the yellow Palpatine player. That was awesome. Yeah, that was a cool <laughs> deck to see. That was a really cool deck to see. Yeah, yellow I, Palpatine and blue Grand Inquisitor was cool to see. I really want the VODs to come out so that I can watch those yellow Palpatine decks because that's probably the deck that I'm most excited to watch and see how it works. Yeah. 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 I think we kind of all assumed it was either green or blue, and then we opened up the deck list, and it's like, what? What's, like, a, yeah. what's a yellow? <laughs> change a heart super oh, cool oh that, my goodness that, that's a deck that jay's been threatening to make for a long time and hasn't done so yet so <laughs> uh, well it's like game. you got traitors you got you change your heart, heart you got palpatine flip you just take all their people <laughs> yeah. yeah don't Clef even play palpatine. units <laughs> yeah that's right just play out of aspect for cause and a bunch of hero cards and take all their units and you just <laughs> win right i don't think he was even uh <laughs> He was playing traitors, but he wasn't playing change of heart. I think there was. I think he was. was. Yeah, I think there were two in the deck. Okay. I'll have to go back and look. From, from I what thought I, I looked and I saw he was not playing one of those two, but maybe mm-hmm. he was. I don't know. Yeah. See, that that's another example of like, oh, someone brought something different and it did well and it causes some conversation and some things we want to try. Mm-hmm. So yeah. to, for me, I started to think because there were, there were a bunch of Leia's that were doing better than Sabine over the weekend. And so I was yeah. thinking about Leia, but for some reason, the Leia red deck wasn't doing as well as it could. And so I started to wonder it, what it did for me in my deck building brain is like, okay, could Leia be paired with ECL so that you can drop her on the five resource with steadfast battalion to kill the Boba Fett's that might beat the, the Leia's instead. So start. It got me in thinking, like, okay, could you do a mono green Leia that is, is I don't know, just has a little bit more success? So I, I have no results. No. I have just, I just have theories. See, okay, see that kind of attitude, Mike, is <laughs> what we don't want in build it, build it, and prove it. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> the it. results made me do think it. of could this work, and now I'm going to do it because you said it doesn't work. So. I thought you were building good first. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I'm just trying to bait you into actually doing it because I'm not building uh, shit. <laughs> I know you're 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 motivated by uh, naysayers. <laughs> I yep. yeah, except except when it comes to gin, I have zero interest in playing gin. Like it's, I don't know, I don't know what that is. We did that, Mike and I built that yeah, live. It's a good so. thing that we had a whole podcast episode about building gin. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't listen to it. <laughs> I, I can't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's all i had today uh anything else from you guys no nah, jay's gotta bounce he's gotta run uh that's i gotta what he, go that's play what, this thrawn deck <laughs> there we go <laughs> report back i hope your only loss is against your tarkin build <laughs> perfect <laughs> that's good all right guys thanks so much for tuning in to the conversation lab be sure to hop in the discord if you're not there already we'll see you in the next one Bye. bye, bye.